Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to answer the question just what exactly is a high boy? There's a lot of confusion over that topic, so hopefully I clear it up today. I'm going to go over everything I can with uh, what I have here. We're going to do a little bit of compare and contrast between our ultimate high boy and this factory high boy over here. So hopefully we answer everybody's question about it and we clear some things up for people. So let's go dig into it. Hey guys, well today it's all about high boys. First, we're gonna dig into this stock high boy and I'm gonna just kinda talk about what exactly a high boy is. And then we'll be going into our ultimate high boy and comparing and contrasting a little bit so I can show you guys just the little, little different things I did with that truck and improvements I did to make it uh, the ultimate high boy in my opinion. But first, let's look at this stock one. Uh, I want to talk about the definition of what exactly a high boy is to begin with. There's a lot of controversy and a lot of uh, uh incorrect information a lot of times with high boys and uh, uh some guys just flat out don't know what they are so uh first off a high boy isn't a ford term it isn't even a uh it's a slang term all all it is is a slang term for a four-wheel drive f-250 that's all it means um originally i think it started out in uh, the story i heard was it started out in the jc whitney catalog uh in 78 ford came out with a uh, different four f-250 four-wheel drive the transfer case was married these are divorced i'll talk on that later but uh, uh the the truck set lower down and uh the jc whitney catalog distinguished them as low boys and high boys uh i don't know if that's correct that's just the story i heard uh that's that was before my time but as long as i've been alive these have been referred to as high boys and uh, that's kind of how we refer to them as and uh it's uh it's a, just a slang term that stuck, I guess, but it wasn't a, ever a Ford term. I think Ford used high rider in some literature. Uh, it wasn't ever like an official term, just in some advertisements and stuff. They might've called them high riders, but uh, they never called them high boys. But anyway, uh, all that high boy means is uh, F-250 four wheel drive. And uh, the years are kind of uh, uh, argued over too. Some people say 59 to 77, uh, but uh, the, general consensus is most of the people say 67 to 77 77 and a half uh is uh what a high boy is uh bump size and dent size basically so uh just bump size and dent size f-250 four-wheel drive is all that a high boy means it's nothing it's not an option package it wasn't an option that you had to get it wasn't uh anything special anything like that it just f-250 four-wheel drive 67 to 77 but uh, anyway let's dig into this uh the stock high boy and i'll kind of show you around First off, uh, we'll start at the back here, since there's not as much different on the back. Um, they have uh, four inch blocks on the back. These are just uh, to lift the, to make the back end sit up higher. Four inch blocks, they have uh, uh, two and a quarter inch leaf springs. They, uh, uh, the leaf springs and leaf spring perches are the same as F-350. A lot of this truck is the same as an F-350. The frame is thicker back here and the uh the leaf springs are different than the f-250 let's see i have a f-250 right over here i can show you springs are a little bit wider and this one has this uh the goofy shackle deal that ford did but uh there's no block in the back and the uh the spring perches are a little bit different and the frame see how much smaller that frame is right there we'll go back over here to this uh this high boy here See that frame is a lot thicker there. That's basically the same as an F-350 frame. And the, the spring, see that, uh, that spring hanger, how it's sitting up a lot higher up, basically because the frame is a lot thicker here. The uh, two-wheel drive uh, hanger hangs down a lot lower. But uh, anyway, that's, that's what's different here in the back. And uh, moving forward up here. Now, I will note that uh, the, the dent sides, everything that I'm going over now is kind of bump sides because that's what, I'm a bump side guy, so that's what I have here. But uh, I'll kind of sprinkle in a little bit of dent side high boy stuff. Uh, probably won't do, I probably won't have a comprehensive uh, coverage of all the 
differences in the dent sides. Uh, the dent sides are a lot more common, and they had a lot of changes through the years where the uh, the bump sides are pretty pretty much uh, universal and kind of the same. Uh, but I'll sprinkle in some dent side knowledge in there for you guys if you're interested in dent sides. Uh, I'm just not around them as much, so I don't I don't know like everything, all the ins and outs of them. So I'll probably miss some stuff. But uh, if if I do miss some stuff, comment below, and uh, if there's some good knowledge, I'll pin it at the top so uh, anybody watching this can see that comment. But uh, anyway. Uh, one dent side thing I was going to talk about was uh, the uh, uh, two-wheel drives have a 37-inch frame in the back and inboard fuel tanks. The uh, high boys have a 34-inch frame and a fuel tank in the cab because uh, they use the same, basically the same frame. They are two inches longer wheelbase, but exactly the same frame as a uh, as a bump side as the, the dent sides used. So um, that is one difference between the two-wheel drive and, and uh and a four-wheel drive dent side but a two-wheel drive bump side has a 34 inch frame all front to back so uh that's a lot of that's another mis misnomer that some guys have is they say well what makes a high boy is a 34 inch frame well no on a dent side yes but on a uh, bump side a two-wheel drive has a 34 inch frame as well that also makes a two-wheel drive uh body swap to a four-wheel drive a lot easier because the bed bolts down uh and uh it it the bed holes line up because the frame is the same with on a uh, dent side if you do a body swap the uh, bed holes are going to be too far out because the the frame is wider in the back but anyway that's just one thing the the bump sides make it nice and easy because the the, the uh, body works the body swap works All right there's the uh, transfer case another big thing that uh, makes a high boy a high boy is the divorce transfer case this is a dana 24 the bump sides use dana 24s the dent size used Dana 20, or not Dana's, uh, New Process 205s and New Process 203s. We'll have one of those I'll show you in a minute, but this is a Dana. You're, they just kind of look a little bit different. You just have to know, be able to tell them apart. There's a PTO cover over here. Some of them had a PTO powered winch. I don't have one of those to show you, but pretty cool. They had a PTO out here and a drive shaft that went up to the front that ran a winch. That's pretty cool. Big long drive shaft in the front little shorter one in the rear all of these were uh, long beds by the way there was not a short bed uh, high boy any uh, f100 or anything they're not high boys they're they're uh, they're not classified as high boys so I've, I've heard seen people talk about f100s full drives and call them high boys well they're not technically a high boy so uh, that would be an incorrect term there's the intermediate drive shaft it goes from the transmission to the transfer case that's what makes it divorced the transfer case is not married to the transmission, so they're separated. That's why it's called divorced. All right, here's another good shot at the uh, bigger frame, same as an F350. Like I said, the uh, cross member for the uh, uh, transfer case is unique to a full wheel drive, so uh, you have to have a full wheel drive high boy frame to have that transfer case cross member, and the transfer case bolts to it here. There's some rubber isolators, and those like to go out as well, and then your transfer case shakes. But uh, another thing about a high boy is uh, they have outboard cab mounts like this. And uh, F-350s have the outboard cab mounts as well. So basically it has F-350 cab mounts. Uh, you'll notice a lot of this stuff is F-350 stuff just because they made these tougher. Because uh, they'd be used harder off-road and frame flexing and stuff. So I'm sure they put the uh, F-350 frame in there because it's a little beefier frame. So it has outboard cab mounts. And if you're doing a uh, f uh, two-wheel drive swap on a high boy uh, f-250 two-wheel drive swap the uh, it'll have inboard cab mounts but the the uh, indentions are in the cab there for these cab mounts so all you gotta do is drill out that hole and you can use these so that's a little tip for you as far as the cab goes everything's the same uh, there's nothing unique about the cab other than the holes on the on there obviously but uh, the, the only thing different about the cab would be the transmission cover there's another hole for the transfer case shifter so so the cabs are the same that's easy nice nice easy to swap go up here look at the front axle all high boys had a all regular cab high boys had a dana 44 uh there wasn't ever a dana 60 in a high boy the uh, snow fighter dana 60 the kingpin dana 60 that everybody is sought after 68 69 uh, 78 79 those were not high boys those were the low boy trucks so uh, uh the, there's never a dana 60 in the high boy although it is a common swap they do bolt right in so uh, if you see one with a dana 60 it's not necessarily the stock one but it is a uh, upgrade so 
uh, disc brake upgrade. So that's that's uh, just some information there for you. All uh, all of them had Dana Dana 44s. There was Dana 44s and Dana 44 HDs. This is the small axle. I think it's 3,300 pound rating. The HD was 3,500 pound rating. And on the uh, the crew cabs, I'm not sure exactly sure when they started. It was sometime in the dent side era. In the crew cabs, a crew cab high boy had a Dana 60 with Dana 44 HD outers, and it had a 3,800 pound rating. So it was a little bit different. It's not like a Snowfighter axle. A Snowfighter has a 4,500 pound rating uh, to carry a snowplow out front. That's why why they call them Snowfighters, I think. But uh, I'm not sure when they started that. Like I said, dent sides aren't my thing. But uh, I know there was some crew cab high boys that had Dana 44 or outers with Dana 60 centers. So anyway, this is a the smaller Dana 44. It has smaller uh, closed knuckle ends on it. See, there's the closed knuckle, the ball. There's a huge one in there, and there's oil in that or grease. It's kind of it's kind of like thick, really thick oil, and uh, king pins right there, top and bottom. And uh, it's it's uh, oh, a smaller axle. The Dana 40 H the Dana 44 HD had a lot bigger uh, outers on it. I'll show you one of those here in a minute. The uh, center sections were the same. And uh, there's the uh, steering linkage. They had uh, they had this uh, steering box that went through the frame here, and then the uh, pitman arm, and then a drag link right here that went to the. Uh, the axle and then a crossover tie rod right there so they they uh, had this kind of goofy uh, old school steering setup not that great for flexing but these things were not that flexy the frame would the frame would flex more than the suspension really so uh, none of the bump sides had power steering in the uh, dent sides 73 and up there was an option for power steering but it wasn't a power steering gearbox it was a power assist cylinder so this link right here was different. It had a, like a, I don't know what to call it, but a sensor deal. It had a bunch of hoses in it, so it could tell if you were pulling or pushing. And then there was an assist arm on the tie rod that pushed and pulled and helped you steer. So uh, that was the power steering setup with those. There was never a power steering steering box on a high boy. However, it is very common to swap one on it. Uh, a lot of them are hacked together. Some of them are pretty clean. So uh, you just kind of have to watch that if you get one power steering. A lot of times, when they did it back in the day when these were just old work trucks they'd use a torch and they'd torch out a lot of this stuff and make it fit but uh some of them are clean some of them aren't but uh, that's just something to look out for that i always like to look out for another thing that's different about the high boys is they have a unique oil pan Let's see if i can get a shot of that for you guys they have a rear sump the fe's have a rear sump oil pan the uh two-wheel drive pickups all had front sumps that rear sump FE oil pan is kind of uh, hard to come by. And uh, uh, there's aftermarket ones. Uh, Mylodon makes a rear sump one that works with high boys. But the uh, the factory pan is kind of hard to come by. And uh, the dipstick tube is unique to a high boy. All the high boys had uh, new process 435 transmissions, which is kind of a one ton transmission. You know, F350 again. A lot of the F350s had that uh, heavier duty transmission. You can always tell that because the uh, reverse is, is uh, over and down, where a T18, a lot of the uh, uh, three-quarter tons had over and up transmissions. That's a T18, a Borg Warner. But they had new processes. Here's the, uh, there's a spring shackle through the, through the frame right there. And there's the leaf spring and the axle. Front cab mounts are the same. The front of the frames are different and a two-wheel drive as well the uh the big difference in the frame here is uh, the cross member under the engine is gone where the uh, the two-wheel drives had a cross member under here for uh the uh twin i-beam setup it goes under the engine and uh, that's gone and there's a big cross member let me get a better shot of it i'll show you a frame that's uh off the truck here in a minute but there's the uh, there's the big cross member right there that's not there on a 250, and there's not one under the engine. The engine's basically just hanging there with nothing under it. So the because uh, the axle, the axle would actually hit the uh, cross member there. Some some people like to, uh, or some people think you can just put an axle under a two-wheel drive frame and uh, and be good. But really, that axle will hit that cross member. So you have to have a lot of lift. You can do it, but you have to have a lot of lift. 
and uh, set the body up a lot higher. So it's, it's harder to do. You can do it. You can kind of notch it out and stuff, but uh, uh, it's not, uh, not ideal because that cross member kind of gets in the way of the axle. They also had this uh, cross member right here where the front of the leaf spring hooks onto on the frame. It's another difference there. The uh, one thing about the high boys is uh, since uh, the transmission isn't married or the transfer case isn't married, the uh, the gear shift, the transfer case shifter gets pretty loose, kind of loose because it's a big long, a long arm. This one's really loose. The uh, bushings out of it, but uh, if you're pulling hard, uh, this thing shakes a lot in your transfer case. If your bushings are bad in your transfer case, it'll shake a lot. And if you're in full drive and pulling hard or something, this will pop out of gear because your transfer case is moving separately from your engine and transmission and so sometimes this will pop it out of gear it's kind of annoying sometimes you have to hold it in low range if you're in low range pulling hard pulling up a hill or something it's a, a common problem but uh, usually if you have one that's all tight it's not a problem but old, old farm trucks out here on the farm we have that we have that problem a lot because these things get loose and they pop out of gear it's kind of annoying there's that shifter i was talking about over and down for that uh, new process transmission Otherwise, in here, everything's pretty much just standard, uh, standard uh, bump side. Uh, the uh, kit, like I said, the cab mounts are different, but you can't see that from in here. So that's kind of just your general overview of the high boy and the uniqueness of it and what makes it different. There's another little thing. If I can get this hood open. There we go. The, uh, the high boys have uh, an F350 core support, basically. Uh, again, another F350 item, but the, they have this uh, piece right here that's on the core support and the radiator mounts on it, where on a two-wheel drive, it mounts to this part right here. So just a little bit different. Go show you this two-wheel drive over here, F250. I'll show you the difference in the front of the frame. Right here's that uh, cross member I was talking about. This goes, you know, right in line with the tires, so the axle kind of gets in the way here because it hangs down. These twin I beam trucks need that, obviously. And there's nothing up here that uh, doesn't have any of the front cross members or this one up here. So this is the, the main cross member on a two wheel drive. So that's that little bit of different difference there. And I'll show you on this uh, 250 uh, crew cab here. It's a two-wheel drive as well. Here's the uh, core support on it and the, the radiator. The radiator's gone, obviously, but the radiator mounts right here flat. It doesn't have that piece, right, that rib right here, where a 350 does. So that's just a uh, unique high boy item. The radiators are different. The radiators are kind of like a one ton. But, uh, that's, that's another little difference, difference in that. So uh, I'm going to take you inside the shop right now, and uh, we're going to look at a Dana 44 HD axle. So uh, I can show you guys a little bit of difference that. So let's head in the shop. So here's a uh, Dana 44 HD axle. This is actually for our crew cab high boy project that we have here on the channel. We just got done rebuilding this axle front to back, changing the gears. And uh, here's that big ball end I was talking about. It's a lot beefier. This axle is the, uh, the 3,500 pound rating, a little bit beefier. The lockout hubs are a lot bigger. They, you know, the other ones taper down to a small end. These kind of get bigger, and they have a lot. Big, they have big bolts out here. So uh, these are a lot bigger. The brake rotors are different. The knuckles are different. Everything. The kingpins are bigger. The wiper seals are bigger. Everything's bigger on these HD axles. The center section is the same. All the parts interchange here, but uh, the outer, just basically the outers, are a lot beefier, which is where you get your higher weight rating for the axle. So. Uh, this uh, lockout hub over here was what the early bump sides had. They had this one right here. These were prone to breaking. This one actually is broke. This was on uh, my dad's 67, and it broke, and he had to put, uh, he put worn lockout hubs on it. We just got this one on here because we're getting ready to paint this axle, so that's on there to cover up the ends there. But uh, that's what the early bump side high boys had on them. I'm not sure when they quit that. Uh, the, uh, the HDs aren't as common on the bump sides. It was, it was available. Uh, and I think all the crew cab uh, high boys and bump sides had the HD axle, but I think the 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 two wheel drive uh, the the regular cabs 
it was standard to have the smaller axle, but you could option to get the bigger one, but you had to select it. Where on the dent sides, all of them had the HD axle, I'm pretty sure. So I think all the dent sides had the HD axle, and the bump side, you could get the small one or the big one. But anyway, that's the, uh, that's the HD axle. The easiest way to tell them apart is if you're looking at a picture of a truck, if it has these big bolts on the outside, it's an HD axle. If it's just a smooth snout on the end, it's a, uh, it's a smaller one, just a regular 44. Right over here is a, uh, a uh, new process 205 transfer case. So uh, this is the little bit different transfer case in that Dana 24. Here's the rubber isolators that like to go out, like these are bad. These will be replaced before it goes back on. But uh, this is that new process. It just looks a lot different. You kind of just got to know the difference about them. It has this big aluminum plate right there. You can tell the difference between the 24. And the 24 has like another bearing thing right here. And they're just, they're just a lot different. But uh, anyway, that's a uh, new process 205. I like these a lot better. There's a lot more parts availability for these. The, the Dana 24s, there's not as many parts and they're a lot more expensive. Uh, so usually these 205s are a big upgrade because uh, those are pretty common in off-road. Uh, I got another frame I uh, want to show you that has a 203 on it. So we'll cut to that footage and then we'll go check out a uh, bear frame out in the weeds I got that I can show you a little bit of stuff on. So we'll uh, check out this uh, 75 frame then we'll go out to the, the back junkyard. Here we have a uh, 75 high boy frame. And uh, this one's a little bit different because it has a 203, a new process 203 transfer case, and it had a, originally a C6. So uh, here's the uh, the shifter that bolts onto the C6, and it's a little bit different, and the transfer case is a little bit different. These were full-time four-wheel drive trucks, as they uh, called them. Uh, I think, I'm not 100% sure, uh, they, these are actually... Uh, clutch there was a clutch in this and it was full time and you had to put it in lock for it to do 100 percent full drive or you do it in all-wheel drive which had a differential here and it could change front to back i'm not quite sure on these i'm not uh i'm not uh big on the uh dent side high boys so i don't know everything ins and outs of these but uh, uh 205 two or 203 transfer case which is a little bit less desirable than a 205 but i think this one has been converted to a uh conventional different uh conventional transfer case there's a i think there's a kit that you can change them because originally th this truck was in a wreck and the, the spindle broke off but i'm actually stripping some parts off of this thing uh if you remember a while back i had a uh, sold a few trucks and one of them was a 70 blue crew cab well the guy that's buying that truck is uh wanting this frame to make that truck a high boy so uh I'm selling this frame and that truck is a package deal so i'm stripping a few things off of it getting getting it ready for him to pick up but see on the, on this end where it's not broke off there's a uh, there's a lockout hub on it where originally there just been a cap on there and these were they didn't have a lockout hub on them because if you unlock the axles it's like an open differential in the center it would send all the power up here to the easiest uh wheel kind of like a uh if you have an axle and it has an open differential, if you jack one wheel up, it'll just, it'll just spin that one wheel that's it's easy to spin. It's the same thing here. It would it would send all the front power to here and none to the back. I think, I'm just kind of going off of what I think it is. I didn't do any research. I should have looked it up before I started talking here. But anyway, if you're more interested in this, guys, do your own research. I'm just showing you a little bit different, uh, different setup here on a high boy since we're talking about high boys. But uh, this is the MP203 and uh full-time full wheel drive setup so it's just a little bit different so here's another high boy frame we have it's a 67 high boy uh it has the uh, big hub on it and uh this truck is unique because i th i think it was ordered with the from the factory with a small hub axle and then uh, the guy we got it from uh who bought it new hit a big rock out in the pasture and bent the axle and he just bought the uh, hd axle and uh, replaced it with it I th I'm not sure on 67, but I think like 68, 69, you had to uh, special request the HD axle because it was crew cab only and it wasn't on the option list. I'm not quite sure on that, kind of just uh, going off of some knowledge, some hearsay I've heard, but uh, uh, you could get one. I don't know on 67, but uh, on 68, I know because I've seen a 68 with a factory HD axle. And I think you had to special request it, but I think they would build you one with it. Anyway, this is this axle. Here you can see the uh, the steering shaft is different on a uh, on a high boy. That's one thing I forgot to mention right there. It has this uh, special steering shaft. This, the uh, steering column is different. The end of the steering column it doesn't have the rag joint, 
it has this universal joint and has that uh, slip joint down there at the steering box but uh, so there there's the steering box and everything here's the uh, better shot at the transmission cross member or the transfer case cross member sorry and right here's where the transfer case bolts on and here's a better shot of the outboard cab mounts and you can get a better shot of the uh, the front cross member there and the, the missing cross member under the engine so uh, that's these the uh, the spring perches are different for a high boy frame as well for the engine but they they are interchangeable from 300 to, to v8 you just have to move them the holes like right there's a hole you'd move it up for the uh, 300 engine the six cylinder but uh, that's that and uh, since we have this cab here if I can get in it I would show you the uh, uh, yeah here's the, here's the rear cab mounts and see here's the uh, the uh, fuel tank hold down plates it's rusted off but there'd be a hold down here for the fuel tank that that uh, right there's the outboard cab mounts the glass broke here so the rear glass there's Right there is where a F-250 cab mount would be. So uh, that's missing there. And uh, right here is the high boy cab mount. So if you're doing a swap, you have to drill out this hole right here. But not a big deal because this indention is right here. So all you gotta do is drill out that hole and it lines up right with, right with the cab mount. So, so that's kind of the uh, breakdown of a factory high boy. Now we're gonna go back and uh, we're gonna take a look at my ultimate high boy and kind of compare and contrast what I did different on that truck and uh, the improvements I made on it so, so you guys can compare uh, the differences between that truck and a real high boy so let's go check that out hey guys before I dig into the ultimate high boy I forgot one thing almost the most important thing can't believe I forgot it is that the VIN number all the high boys started out with f26 so uh, having that f26 uh, VIN number uh, makes tells you that this is a high boy so uh, uh, that's that's real important uh, and if you everybody say f26 or you know f26 truck that's what they're referring to is the first three digits of the vin number there was also an f28 which would mean cabin chassis uh so those would be considered high boys as well they just wouldn't have had a bed on them so uh there is f28 high boys as well so they're just not as common most of the time they're f26 so wanted to point that out so let's go over here to this ultimate high boy as i call it i mean technically it's not really a high boy anymore but uh, it looks like one, so that's why I call it it. It does have a high boy frame. It has a 74 high boy frame. These frames are 133 inch wheelbase and the dent side, bump sides are 131. So there is a two inch wheelbase difference. I fixed that with the uh, leaf springs in the back. If you wanna see how I did that, check out the build series I did with this truck. I go over a lot more stuff on that build series, the Ultimate High Boy. Uh, there's a playlist I'll link in the uh, description of this video. You want to check that out uh, the ultimate high boy build series but this truck what i did i wanted to build a truck that i could drive every day and uh that uh wasn't as uh oh rough riding and slow and uh prone to problems as these these things are as great as they are but uh wanted one that was just uh looks looks like a high boy but performs like a lot better truck so what I did was, first off, I put a uh, Dana 60 on it, but it's not a snow fighter. This one's actually off of a 93 F350. And uh, the problem with these is the, the differential housing is a lot further over to the end because those frames are wider. They're 37 inch frames where these are 34. So the leaf springs don't work because the leaf springs are too far out. So what I did to fix that was I did three link. I did three link suspension with coilovers. So uh, that fixed the, uh, the uh, Dana 44 problem so I gotta and the, the snow fighters are just so dang expensive uh, these th I got this for like $750 a uh, snow fighter axle I just saw one for sale today for $2,800 so uh, th these are a lot cheaper that's why I went this route uh, and plus I was planning on doing coilovers and three links so it didn't need the uh, the snow fighter the uniqueness of it for the narrowness for the leaf springs since I wasn't doing leaf springs uh, put a sway bar on it and uh, I changed the the front end of this frame was kind of beat up so I cut cut it off and put super duty front front end on it and it has a super duty steering gear right there if you can see it so I have power steering with that steering gear and I have crossover steering there's my uh, drag link right there that crosses over and it follows my uh, pan hard bar right there the angle so I don't get bump steer so that that allows my front end to flex a lot more than this the drag link setup that's right here because uh, with that the more you flex your steering input would change a lot so 
with this setup it doesn't do that so i like to go off road with this truck and that helps that a lot so uh the front the front cross member's gone i added one up here but the, the cross member under the engine isn't there anymore and uh another thing that i changed different for the reasons that i told you with that other one was i have a married transfer case now that's still a 205 transfer case but it is married to the transmission and the uh, right here is the cross member for the divorce transfer case and it's no longer there as you can see so that transfer case is married to the transmission gives the transfer case a lot more solid mounting and uh it doesn't have that problem with the engine torquing and the transfer case not moving or the frame twisting and that linkage between the transfer case and the transmission uh moving and popping the thing out of gear you, you won't have that problem with this setup so that's why i went that route and plus it eliminates another drive shaft two more u-joints you have to service and uh yeah makes the front drive shaft a lot shorter too uh, a lot of times these high boys the uh the front drive shaft's so long and they're, they're just sitting there hanging but they bounce a lot and the spline is usually shot in that that uh, front drive line a lot of times i've seen uh so, since it's sitting there not moving a lot and just bouncing up and down it uh, the splines get shot in them pretty bad but anyway we have a lot longer rear drive shaft obviously because it's uh married um so uh, that's the reason i did the married transfer case i also did an automatic in this truck i did a uh there's the automatic aftermarket steering column it is a 6r80 transmission so uh modern transmission with overdrive and everything uh i still have the uh the floor shifter for the transfer case but there's no shifter now they did offer automatic high boys in the like that 75 frame i showed you there's automatic high boys in those i'm not sure when they started that um like i said not not uh up to speed on all the uh, dent side stuff but uh, in a dent side you could get an automatic uh, uh, high boy and I have a uh, have an automatic steering column in here in the shop I'll show you that since we're talking about it yeah so in here off of that truck that I got that frame from here's the uh, the uh, automatic high boy steering column see there's the gear lever there the uh, gear indicator and what makes this the high boy steering column is it has the uh, the splined output there on the shaft so it's splined instead of having the uh, the rag joint style joint on the end of that there's a there's a spline for that universal joint so there's a uh, automatic high boy column which is kind of rare uh, if you're doing a high boy swap like I couldn't find one of these when I did the ultimate high boy so I didn't have the uh, Ford factory steering column I have to make that aftermarket one work but uh, here's that that uh, automatic one which is pretty cool to have and here's a couple of a of a high boy lift blocks there back here on my ultimate high boy here uh on the rear end i have a dana 70 which wasn't ever available on a high boy and uh disc brakes which wouldn't be correct for the rear end but uh so i have that upgraded bigger axle and uh disc brakes it still has uh, high boy style leaf springs although those are aftermarket uh lifted leaf springs and then i took the block out and uh i have a little bit of block in there because it was sitting a little low but uh that's the rear end setup i have 14 gears in this truck that's another thing uh all high boys except 67 had 14 gears and in 67 they all had 456 so 67 is unique where it had those uh, lower gears in it but uh all the all the high boys had four tens in it and uh i'm not sure on the uh 205 trucks with the automatic they had different gears i'm not sure on that on the dent size but bump size for sure all of them had four tens and uh another thing was uh engine options you didn't you didn't have all the engine engine options on a high boy uh 360 was the only v8 except for 67 where it was 352 so you could have a six owner or a th uh, 360 you couldn't get a 390 in a high boy now on the later year trucks the 77s you could get a 400 the 66 i think it's 66 and 67 you get a 400 so uh, when they discontinued the fe they had uh, different engine options obviously and another thing on the uh, the uh, starting in 76 they had a dana 44 with disc brakes with open knuckles so uh, those those axles are pretty sought after because they swap right into a high boy and you can get disc brakes in the front because there is no disc brake option for these uh these dana 44 closed knuckles but uh here's another shot of that steering gear or the steering shaft sorry and the uh, different steering column so it has that big long shaft and here's the steering gear right there so that's unique to a high boy here's the dipstick tube so uh oh another thing i guess 
is the uh, the oil filter adapter is different because uh, it's a 90 degree oil filter adapter where a tool drive is sticking straight out. So the oil filter is different. The oil filter is the same, but the adapter is different that bolts to the engine block. Um, hopefully I didn't miss anything, guys. So uh, kind of just went over everything that I uh, I could think of right quick looking at these trucks. Shows you the difference between the Ultimate High Boy and this, uh, this uh, uh, 72 High Boy we have here, this factory High Boy. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope it cleared up a lot of uh, the uh, high boy uh, questions anybody had and kind of what exactly is a high boy. And so anyway, uh, thinking about uh, doing a shootout between this truck and the ultimate high boy, if I can get this truck running good enough, what do you think about that? We'll go out and do some pasture roads and see, see how the uh, factory high boy compares to the ultimate high boy. Uh, obviously the ultimate high boy is gonna blow it out of the water. I'm kind of biased on that regard, but uh, anyway, I thought that'd be a fun video. What do you guys think? Comment, in the, uh, comment down below if you wanna see that and uh, like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks guys.